This video will discuss uh, the simulation of this lifespan investment model, um, as well as a couple of modifications that I think will make the model just a little bit more useful. So if we recall, um, we developed this model, and over here in this column called death, we take the simulated lifespan and use that through this logical formula to place a one in the year where uh, on that trial for the simulation, the person is simulated to die. And then at the very bottom, remember, for the very last, since we're only modeling this person's life out 30 years, we're just going to effectively assume that um, if they make it to the end of 30 years, their remaining balance after 30 years is what we're going to consider as their ending wealth. Now, in reality, they might live longer than 30 years, but it's a simplifying assumption in this model. We could certainly model the person's life out for longer. But in any case, what we're going to see in this column is just all zeros and then a one only in one year, either uh, somewhere up to year 29 if the person doesn't die before 30 years, or in the very final row if uh, they're still alive at year 30. But we'll still consider this the ending balance for modeling purposes in that case. So what we see in the, this cell here that we called remaining is just a sum product of the ending balances and the year of death. And there's only going to be one, uh, a one in this column. So it's effectively just going to pull the ending balance for the year the person dies up into this, this column. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and replace, uh, remove the output down here. Uh, from the row for year 30, so we'll uh, just remove that. And then have the new output be the remaining balance at death. Uh, really, it's death or age 90, whichever is later. And so now we can simulate that. And we're going to notice um, a big difference in terms of how often the you know the what the person ends their life with, and it's going to give potentially a lot more leeway because now even if we use this larger amount about eighty four thousand in consumption, um, the person had, you know, the 90% certainty interval is between negative 2.6 million and 11.3 million. And so that's an improvement on the case where we just uh, ran out the investments until age 90. Now, let's look at one more change uh, that will help just make this model a little bit more realistic. Um, if we change this to, say, a larger number, about 150,000, be 200,000. What we see is um, pretty quickly we have a negative ending balance here. So anything here, I've entered a really large number here just to illustrate this, but anything here where this goes negative, really the person has just run out of money and they'd probably be relegated to living on Social Security. So what we could do is uh, potentially just fix the model so that uh, if they ever did not have any more investments left, they'd just simply consume what was left. And then for the remainder of their life, they'd have to live on, uh, say, Social Security payments or from their family. So let's make an adjustment here, small adjustment to this consumption formula. And that is going to be for this amount here, where we're calculating the real consumption, we'll just make this the minimum min of the beginning balance comma this amount 
for the uh, inflation adjusted consumption. We'll just have to be real careful here with these parentheses. And so what happens is if this inflation adjusted consumption is greater than the beginning balance, we'll just have them consume the beginning balance. And that'll kind of eliminate these unrealistic scenarios in the model. We'll copy that down. And so now when the person runs out of money, it essentially just zeroes out this model. And um, so what that means is that they're not going to consume any more from their investments. They'd have to consume Social Security. And that'll make this remaining amount a little more realistic. In fact, the remaining amount will be zero because they wouldn't really go negative um, in terms of their investment balance. So if we simulate this, and I've got an unrealistic uh, consumption amount here, 200,000. Um, what happens is, of course, they run out a lot of money. So let's change this to uh, maybe a more realistic amount. We had about 84,000 in there previously. So now, of course, the minimum that they have remaining is zero. Um, and we get uh, a mean and median value, um, but are still a very wide range of values. So the mean is really large here. So even though there are scenarios where they would run out of money, it's pretty interesting that the average ending balance is, at death is still very large and the median is still well over a million dollars. Now, what we could do to sort of think about how often the person runs out of money is what we could do is define a, a variable hill called failure. And that would just simply be if the remaining amount is equal to zero, then we'll put a one in this failure cell and a one indicates that they did fail and a zero indicates they didn't. So if they run out of money, that's our definition of failure in this model, which really means failure is uh, just living the remainder of their life on Social Security payments. So we can make that an output. And now simulate this. And so what we see here is that failure is either 0 or 1, and in this case, the mean is about 22%. So that means with this allocation and this consumption amount, along with the retirement period 3 and consumption 5,000, this person runs out of money before they die about 22% of the time. And so we can decide if that's acceptable. It may not be completely unacceptable given the fact that they could adjust as they get older uh, to either good or potentially bad results and adjust their consumption later. So those are a couple of modifications that will really help with this lifespan model. Now your challenge will be to expand um, with some uh, restrictions, expand the number of investments here to about eight different investments and suggest some different allocations of those eight investments that this person could use uh, in order to um, in, in order to develop a retirement plan that allows them to consume hopefully as much as possible and you'll do that for the next assignment